You will no doubt be surprised to see monks brewing beer and making cheese. And yet, this is not at all in contradiction with their code of behavior. This dates back to 1098, when St. Bernard imposed a return to the strict rules of observance of St. Benedict and founded the Abbey of Cito, hence the name Cistercian. As regards the Trappist name, this comes from the Abbey of La Trappe in Normandy, where in the 17th century the monks decided to adopt a stricter way of life. That choice was rapidly followed by other Cistercian monasteries, which finally took the name of Trappist. The Trappist monks devote their whole life to the service of God. They abandon all their possessions and make a vow of poverty to share their time between prayer and manual work. In this way, the monks have always cultivated the land, producing their own bread, butter and cheese, and, in the northern countries, brewing their own beer. The monasteries are also places of study and knowledge, so a veritable art of brewing and cheese-making developed there over the years. This tradition was, of course, continued at the Abbey of Chimay. It was during the summer of 1850 that a small group of monks settled on the wild plateau of Scourmont near Chimay. They started to cultivate the barren land to meet their own needs. Over the years, they transformed the hostile environment into fertile farming land. As regards building work, the abbey was developed to form a splendid complex where previously the maturation process of the cheese was completed and where the brewing installations are still to be found. In the meantime, the brewery, the farm and the cheese dairy have become the leading source of employment in the region and provide a powerful dynamic environment. Today, the monks live in the abbey, as they have always done. Their principal duty remains the quest for God. In silence and solitude, they divide their time between prayer, reading and study. The monks' day begins before sunrise at 4.30 a.m. with the saying of matins, and closes six periods of prayer later at 8.30 p.m. with complines. Dans le monde, il n'y a que six abbayes trappistes, cinq en Belgique et une en Hollande, qui peuvent se targuer de faire de la bière vraiment trappiste. Et cela nous permet aussi, bien sûr, en premier lieu, ben, de survivre, c'est-à-dire de d'essayer dans notre monde d'aujourd'hui euh, de pouvoir vivre et aider aussi nos fondations spécialement notre fondation du Zahir qui est très éprouvée pour le moment. Aussi une petite nouvelle fondation qui est déjà pas mal lancée aux Indes et aussi une ancienne fondation au Pays de Galles qui a justement euh, très dur à vivre elle-même parce qu'elle est dans un petit coin très pauvre. Et maintenant, puisque vous savez pourquoi nous fabriquons de la bière, allons visiter la brasserie. Everything starts with the choice of the ingredients. The basic ingredient is malt. This consists of germinated barley, which is then ground and wheat starch. This mass is mixed in a mashed tun with water drawn from a well dug down to 45 meters beneath the abbey. Step by step, the liquid mass is brought up to different temperatures so that the starch of the grain is converted into fermentable sugars. The husks of the grain and the non-soluble residues are filtered out and form the spent grains which are used to feed the livestock. Nous sommes bien contents parce que ça reste un aliment intéressant pour les fermiers des environs qui viennent la chercher. Et les vaches l'aiment beaucoup à tel point que parfois elles sont même un petit peu gaies parce que le, la drèche fermente assez vite. Et alors à ce moment-là, eh bien, elles sont en train de meugler et nous savons bien que c'est tout ce qui est pour la bière de Scourmont est toujours très bon et très apprécié. Since its renovation in 1989, the Chimay Brewery has become an example of the modern art of brewing, where ultra-modern technology is put to the service of the monks' long brewing tradition. Voilà, nous nous trouvons devant la chaudière d'ébullition, où le, où le mou a été donc euh, 
introduit et en mettant toute la vapeur, nous arrivons, nous sommes maintenant à presque 100 degrés. Et c'est ici une étape importante, c'est ici que l'on ajoute le houblon. En partie au début de l'ébullition et en partie à la fin pour euh, qu'on soit vraiment sûr que l'arôme, toute l'amertume du houblon sera bien perçue dans la bière. Once the brewing phase is over, the wort, after the first clarification, is sent to the fermentation vats. Voilà, nous nous trouvons ici de, dans la salle de fermentation où se trouvent les six grandes cuves qui ont une contenance de à peu près 500 hectolitres, c'est-à-dire qu'on peut mettre deux brassins dedans. C'est ici que le mou vient aboutir pour euh, être lancé dans ce processus de fermentation grâce à à ce qu'on appelle un pied de levain. Et en trois jours, quatre jours pour la bière la plus forte, la bleue, la fermentation sera terminée. Et la bière donc sera prête à partir en garde. After a storage period of at least three days and a final clarification by centrifuge, the chimay is ready to be shipped to the bottling plant. Before the tank truck leaves, a small dose of yeast and liquid sugar is added to the beer. This allows the shimei to re-ferment inside the bottle to become fully mature, its flavor to be enriched, and thus undergo a natural champagneization. The bottling process is entirely automated, from the filling of the bottles to the packing of the bottles in cases. The full cases are then stored for a period of at least three weeks. This enables the shimei to re-ferment a second time in the bottle before leaving for its final destination to your home, the United States, Japan, Australia, or any other part of the world. Et voici maintenant je vous présente et j'ai le grand plaisir de vous présenter le père Théodore, euh, une figure euh, emblématique de Scourmont qui est notre ancien et qui notamment a fabriqué, pourrait-on dire, le pied de levain qui sert pour faire la levure encore depuis près de 40 ans. Je n'ai pas fabriqué la levure, mais j'ai isolé la levure. Ça veut dire que la levure, à l'état sauvage, il entraîne partout sur les fruits, dans, sur les animaux, etc. Alors mon long travail de patience a été d'isoler les cellules de levure, de les tester en partant de cette cellule unique, de faire des microbrassins, et puis de voir le goût, les qualités de mousse, etc. Et finalement, lorsque j'ai trouvé une souche qui était bonne, celle-là, j'ai continué à la propager d'une manière tout à fait sélective et isolée. Ce qui signifie qu'aujourd'hui encore, toute notre bière est ensemencée avec de la levure qui descend de cette cellule unique que j'ai isolée. Ça devait être vers... Euh, je sais plus très bien... Vers, Euh, vers 50 ou 60. Here, the brewer remains in contact with each of his brews. The qualities of each brew are tested with indispensable rigor. Finally, it's time for the last and most enjoyable test, the one using the eye, the nose and the mouth. In this way, the Reverend Trappist Fathers can personally guarantee the quality of the Shimei, which can then be savoured in the four corners of the world. If the Shimei beers are unique, they are also in the pure Abbey tradition, being mellow, forthright and powerful at the same time. They have a well-rounded, fruity taste. The Triple is the most recent, this Shimei is golden in color and has an 8% alcohol content. It is best drunk cool, and the bitter hint of hops and its fruity touch make it ideal as an aperitif or thirst quencher. You will recognize it by its white cap. The oldest is the Shimei Rouge, named after its red cap. It has a 7% alcohol content with a velvety sweet taste and a hint of refreshing bitterness. The other dark beer is the venerable Blue. This strong beer with a 9% alcohol content has a pleasant odor of fresh yeast and a slight hint of rosaceous flowers. And that is the full range of beers. 
To avoid any improper use of the Trappist name, Trappist Abbeys have joined forces to protect their identity by way of this logo. Only this logo guarantees that the beer was well and truly brewed in a Trappist Abbey under the supervision of the monks and that the earnings are primarily used for social welfare purposes. Whatever she may you're drinking, serve it with a slow movement of the hand and leave a centimeter in the bottle on account of the refermentation that takes place in the bottle and produces a yeast deposit. Serve it in a perfectly clean Shime glass because it's in such a glass chalice that the flavor and aromas develop their full richness. Bear this in mind and calmly savor it. On the subject of the pleasures of the palate, Shime has something else to suggest. The region between the Sambre and Meuse rivers seems predestined to provide an exceptional cheese. The rich prairies there are sheltered by small woods and covered with idyllic streams. It's not surprising that the cows are contented there and produce a rich milk which, from the beginning, the monks have used to produce butter and cheese. In the face of ever-growing demand, a cooperative of 320 farmers in the region, named Coferme, was set up to take charge of the production and collect the milk with its own tankers. It was also with that cooperative that the Abbey founded a second cooperative, Chimay Fromage, to manufacture Chimay Trappist cheese. As soon as the milk arrives at the dairy farm, its purity is controlled. Strict controls are carried out at each stage of the production process. As cheese is a living matter, it is therefore delicate. So in addition to the cheese itself, the water, the surrounding air, the raw materials and the serum are controlled. This explains how the Shime Dairy Farm obtained the International ISO 9002 certificate, which is a guarantee of quality. To be transformed into cheese, the milk must first curdle. For that, it is mixed with lactic ferments and rennet. This process lasts about 30 minutes. The milk is then transformed into curds consisting of a solid mass, the casein, and a liquid mass, the whey, which must be separated. After extracting the whey, the curds are washed and then cut into large or small blocks depending upon the desired shape of the cheese. Ultimately, 10 liters of milk are needed to obtain one kilogram of cheese. The blocks are placed in molds and transported to the presses. They are kept under pressure for one and a quarter hours until they have acquired their final form. After pressing, the blocks are removed from their molds and dipped in a brine bath in order to enable their taste to mature fully and to guarantee their conservation. The cheese is left in the brine for a period ranging from 4 to 48 hours before being stored in ripening cellars. In these cellars, the temperature is maintained at a constant 13 degrees with 90% of relative humidity, and that is where the miracle takes place. The cheeses are regularly washed and turned to ensure that they mature consistently. All that remains is to wait until the cheese has reached full maturity. The Shime made with beer is a slightly bitter cheese with an aroma of hops. During the maturation process, it's regularly washed with, naturally, Shime Trappist beer. Next, there's the Shime made with milk straight from the cow. As the milk is unpasteurized, it acquires, after six weeks of maturing, a slight taste of full-bodied white wine. The Shime Grand Classique only acquires its taste of good, fresh, creamy milk after four weeks. As with the others, it's a semi-hard pressed cheese without preservatives and with a natural, uncolored crust. Finally, there is the aged Shimei, which is a hard cheese that commands respect. It takes six months for this cheese to acquire its forthright character and fruity taste. The Shimei Trappist cheese offers a wide range of possibilities, from a traditional cheese board of classic cheeses to appetizers, to be eaten with bread as a snack, and also to prepare refined dishes. Shime cheese is a real Trappist cheese with the authentic accent of its region. Together with the Shime Trappist beer, it is the living proof of the rich tradition and know-how of the Abbe de Shime.